We are happy to welcome back to our studios the University of Western Ontario Professor of Urology, Chu Yong Kang. It is wonderful to have you back in that chair. Thank you very much for you, inviting me back. You visited us a few <laughs> years ago and yes. were talking at that time about what you saw as potential. Right. It's more than potential today, but before we do that, let's just show a couple of maps to show some background for what we're going to talk about here. Uh, HIV, the prevalence of HIV in the world today. Globally, there are 34 million people living with HIV. There were 2.6 million new infections in 2009. And if we take a look at this second map, the worst cases, of course, are in Africa, where in some southern regions, as the dark coloring suggests, as much as a quarter of the population lives with HIV. However, here was the news back in December. The first and only preventative HIV vaccine based on a genetically modified kill whole virus has received approval by the United States Food and Drug Administration to start human clinical trials. Developed by Dr. Chil Yong Kang and his team at the University of Western Ontario with the support of Sumagen Canada, the vaccine, SAV001, holds tremendous promise, having already proven to stimulate strong immune responses in preliminary toxicology tests with no adverse effects or safety risks. It is the only HIV vaccine currently under development in Canada and one of only a few in the world. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Second of all, how did you get from where you were when you last visited us to where you are today? So we learned from the experience that others have and also others have published and that um, the many different strategies that people have used, however, uh, none of those strategies unfortunately uh, worked out uh, to prevent HIV infection. So we uh, took the, um, the conventional wisdom, uh, that is the kill the whole virus vaccine strategy works for so many other viral diseases. So why not HIV? So we have produced HIV and then inactivated by chemical and radiation and used as a whole, kill the whole HIV vaccine. But this vaccine, uh, that virus that we have used, are genetically modified so that it is not that dangerous and also produces large quantities when we infect the cells. So we have modified some uh, genes of the HIV and then produced the large quantities and inactivated it. And now it's ready for human clinical trials. Ready for human tests. But uh, have you been testing it on animals In, up until now? It's small animals as well as non-human primates non-human primates, and how does it actually work? Well, when we immunize a foreign body substance, such as proteins, and this is, in this case, is a virus, inactivated virus gets into the, the body of the animal or human, then our body reacts to this foreign substance and they make antibodies. And okay. these antibodies then recognize invading viruses and neutralize, and uh, thereby you can have a protection. And has the problem in the past been that you've not been able to create antibodies strong enough to, to destroy HIV, which is so powerful? Well, uh, the, the strategies that people have used were not the whole virus, but the, taking the part of the genes of HIV, put it into some carrier virus, such as adenovirus or poxivirus, and then put it into the human. Mm -hmm. And the expression of those proteins in those uh, immunized in individuals maybe was not strong enough to get uh, strong enough immune responses. I see. Now, as we said earlier, yours is the only one in Canada so far showing success, but there are others in the world that are on it as well. Are they taking the same approach as you are, as far as you know? Well, as far as I know, uh, we are the only one who is using this approach, and there are many other approaches. In fact, there are about four different approaches to make vaccines against HIV. The one is, of course, the genetic vaccine known as the DNA vaccine. And then there is a vaccine which uses the viruses which doesn't cause any disease, but you can put HIV genes, part of it, into these non -cause, the disease-causing viruses and make a recombinant virus and use that as a vaccine. So that in the past, there have been uh, two companies used those uh, uh, at the, uh, strategies, and they used adenovirus and the poxiviruses, and they did not produce strong enough immune responses. Not strong enough. And, and any of the other ones that are happening elsewhere in the world, are they at the stage where you are in as much as they're ready for human trials as well? There are uh, other vaccines which are uh, in human trials, phase one and phase two, but none of those trials uh, uses the same strategy as we use. 
Okay, you mentioned earlier again that you've done this on small animals, small primates, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, in the testing phase. What, what is it that you actually see when you do it at that stage? When we immunize those um, animals, then uh, when we take out the blood of these immunized animals, and we look at the antibodies in the, in the plasma, uh, and uh, that antibodies can recognize the viral specific proteins. So we have uh, techniques to identify whether or not there is antibody against those proteins. And what you see under the microscope is that the antibodies are attacking. No, and the, in, in, not in the microscope, but the, the, we can do the, what we call Western blots, so that we run the gels and then re let it react with antibodies coming from those immunized animals, and then they show colorimetric the signals, so we can look at whether or not that there is antibody recognizing viral-specific proteins. Okay. Because it's worked in animals, yes. can you reasonably conclude that it'll probably work in humans as well? That's what we assume, yes, because the, the human body reacts to a foreign substance such as this, the vaccines like animals do. And what has to happen in order for this vaccine to prove to be viable? Uh, there are three different phases, phase one, two, and three. Phase one, we look at the, the safety of this vaccine and, uh, and in humans. So that's what we have approval for uh, from US FDA. And uh, we look at whether or not this vaccine is totally safe in human, and that's very important. Once we prove that it is safe in human, it is safe in animals, we have already tested in animals, but make sure that it is also safe in human. And once it's safe in human, then we go into the phase two human clinical trial. And that requires about 600 people and volunteers and where we are looking at immune responses to these vaccines. So uh, we immunize these people and look at the antibody production in these people. And once we demonstrate that, that they do produce antibodies against the viral specific proteins, then we go into the efficacy test. And that is a phase three human clinical trial. And there we have to uh, about recruit approximately 6,000 uh, volunteers uh, for that uh, efficacy test. And uh, that test will tell us whether or not this vaccine is effective in preventing HIV infection. Okay, let me go back to phase two. Yes. You need 600 people who yes. are prepared to be guinea pigs, really, right? Well, they volunteer. In fact, we, we get a lot of requests, uh, and uh, I, I, I'm inundated with uh, the request. The volunteers. So you don't they, think it'll be a problem finding the people? No, there haven't been any problems for other trials and that actually people can recruit the people, uh, those high-risk group people, with, without any difficulties. Now, do you, you need 600 people who have HIV? No, no, no. This no? is the phase one human clinical trial we are looking at about 40 people and that's uh, HIV positive but healthy individuals okay. who has not developed AIDS yet. That's it, that's And that's one. for the phase one and that's okay. just to look at the, the safety. safety of it. Okay. And then phase two and phase three, we need naive people who are not infected with HIV yet. You need what kind of people? Naive, we call it. Naive? Yes, they are not infected yet. This is the, the, oh, the medical terms that we use, those people that, who are not infected, but at the high risk. Okay, and then phase three is 6,000 volunteers. Yes. And what kind of people would be eligible they, for that? There will be um, people from the high risk group, and uh, these include the, um, the hemophiliacs who need multiple uh, blood transfusions, and uh, there's uh, injection drug users, and and they, they, they are vulnerable for infection. And also these commercial sex workers and uh, the gay people with multiple sexual partners. And that those people we categorize as high risk group. And so that we will vol the, uh, recruit those people for the phase three human clinical trials. And, and again, because I don't know, is it tough to get 6,000 people from no, that group? No, I don't think no? so. No. no Do you pay them? Uh, well, we have to pay their expenses to come in for their checkups because we have to have a follow-up studies. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Who, now, this is, again, what's going on in Canada. Do you, I mean, you're in a race, right, with the rest of the world in some respects, right? Uh, well, do you know what's going way, on yes. elsewhere? Well, we do. Uh, we do know that how many uh, phase one and phase two human clinical trials are going on. And uh, those trials are using the similar strategy that which have been uh, tried in the in the past and uh, they were not successful so 
hopefully that uh, this uh, strategy will work. And because it works for other viral diseases, such as hepatitis A, mm -hmm. rabies, a flu, poliovirus, like a soak vaccine, uh, and uh, Japanese encephalitis, and, and so on, and the flu viruses. These are all killed whole virus vaccines. In fact, in addition, there are about 16 animal vaccines using the same strategy. It works. So hopefully that, that this will work for HIV. Let me take you sort of many years down the road. Yes. Would the idea be yes. that, you know, kids when they go in to get their mumps and rubella and measles mm -hmm. and chicken pie and all those other shots, right. this goes into the mix? Is that the idea? No, this has to be independent because those, the childhood viral diseases such as polio, measles, mumps, rubella, and so on, and we immunize them uh, when they are in the adolescent or very young uh, age and to make sure that, that these children are uh, really protected from these common diseases. And this, um, once it's approved, and once it's approved that it is effective vaccine, I guess the, any healthcare workers and anybody who has any kind of risk uh, will take this vaccine. But that's what I'm wondering. If yes. I mean, we're at a stage right now, for example, I think in the last year or two, yes. the federal government said HPV virus yes. um, vaccine, yes. everybody can get it. Yes. Do you see a day when everybody will be getting this HIV vaccine or just those who are sort of in high risk groups? Well, this, this will be uh, voluntary. Uh, I, I don't think one can uh, ask everybody to get these vaccines. Uh, this, this will be voluntary basis. But anybody that who thinks that uh, they are in, in, at risk, then they may be immunized because this will be, uh, for sure, it will be safe and then trigger immune responses which can protect HIV infection. So there's nothing to lose. And again, for the record, do you want to say which groups are considered to be at high risk of contracting HIV? Well, I mentioned that, that there are mm -hmm. three uh, of the four different categories. It's uh, hemophiliacs who needs multiple uh, blood transfusion and, um, and the injection drug users the commercial sex, work, sex workers, and then also the, those people, um, the gay people having multiple sexual partners. Uh, they are at the high risk. Group. Unsafe? Unsafe. Unsafe yes. sexual partners. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, a couple of business questions here, if I yes. can. Yes. Uh, here's uh, intellectual property question number one. Right. Who owns the patent on what you're doing? The University of Western Ontario has the patent. And in fact, uh, the, our, at, I, as a faculty member at the university, uh, we have in the collective agreement that the, uh, any invention that faculty member um, uh, creates, uh, that property uh, belongs to the university. So if this does become huge, yes. do you get rich? <laughs> <laughs> university will get some royalties uh, from the company, and, uh, and then uh, the university will share with the developers including myself. <laughs> okay. And I mentioned again at the very beginning, with the support of Sumajin Canada, who are yes. they? Well, Sumajin Canada is a subsidiary company of a Korean company, biotechnology company, Sumajin. And uh, it's established about five years ago to support our research. And in fact, we do need the office work, workers uh, to uh, handle all the documentations for the uh, approval processes of um, US FDA. How much money do you think you've spent so far trying to get to this point? So far, they must have spent uh, approximately $20 million. $20 million. Yes. It's called SAV001. What does that mean? Sumogen is vaccine number one. Gotcha. <laughs> OK. Uh, are you guys going to come up with a better name for it by the time it's all said and done? <laughs> well, so far, uh, we've been using that uh, SAV001 as, uh, as this uh, first trial vaccine. I see. But I mean, somewhere down the road, would you want it to be called like the Kang vaccine or something like that? No, I don't want to put my name on it. <laughs> you don't want? <laughs> no. no. I mean, we've got the Salk vaccine, right? Yes, After of Jonas course. Salk, yes. So you don't want the Kang vaccine? Well, Salk vaccine is, I mean, there are two Salk, the, the vaccines for polio. The, the killed whole virus vaccine is Salk vaccine, and live virus vaccine is a savings vaccine, right? Oh, okay. so, but I don't want to put my name on it. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Uh, I, God forbid, yes. but what if it doesn't work? Well, God only knows. Uh, we know that it will trigger immune responses and will make antibodies and so on. Whether that those immune responses are protective immune responses, 
We don't know. Uh, because there's no animal model to test the efficacy of the HIV vaccine in any known animals. And that's why the process is so long. Uh, it takes long, long because we can only test in human. So we know that up to the phase two, we have no problem. Uh, we will have, it is totally safe, we know that. And then we will have a good immune responses in human, we know that. Uh, we can extrapolate that from the animal studies. But then we do not know whether this will be protective vaccine against HIV infection. That needs to be seen. How confident are you that you're almost there? Well, I'll leave that, uh, the confidence up to God, and the God will tell us whether <laughs> we, are, we are successful or not. But certainly, uh, we are trying our best, and uh, hopefully that it will work. Chul Yong Kang, we're always grateful for your visits here at TVO. Uh, good luck with your work, and thanks so much for visiting us. Thank you very much for asking me to come. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.